Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and a new video from me. In this video, I'm going to do two DIY wedding decor pieces, table signs and a greenery chandelier. These are pieces that I used for my own wedding this summer and I absolutely love them and I think you will love them as well. So let's get straight into this video. The first thing you want to do is to press some flowers. There are many tutorials on YouTube, but the process is as simple as choosing vibrant colored flowers that are not too bulky. This is to make sure that the flowers will be pressed flat and dry out completely and that some color will actually remain after the drying process. If you choose fresh flowers without rich color, they will appear white after drying. And if they're too big and bulky, you may risk that the flowers don't get pressed completely flat or that they'll have a lot of moisture in them so they will rot rather than dry. Once you have suitable flowers and leaves, just put them in some parchment paper in between the pages of some thick books or some heavy item on top. Then leave the books in a dark, dry place for about four weeks and then you get beautifully pressed flowers after the process. Remember that you can press flowers flat on their face or on their side and with or without their stems to get a variety and keep it interesting. Next thing I did was to create a number templates using the program PicMonkey. When I had my desired design, I printed the template out in the same size as my acrylic sheets, which was five times seven inches. And the acrylic sheets and wood holders were purchased on Amazon. And I will link every single item that I can find in the, in the description box down below. So you will have all the information there. After I had my paper templates, I taped them on the clear acrylic sheets so that they would stay still while I was working. And then I just used a white acrylic marker to trace my design. This marker I bought in Hobby Lobby and it was not the best that I could have, but I made it work and I actually went through two different markers before I finished this project. After this comes the fun part, applying the dried flowers. So first I would test what flowers I wanted on the signs and I discovered that the flowers actually stuck to the acrylic sheets. I don't know if it was magnetism or what type of process that caused it, but it was really easy to try out different placements without gluing on anything. So um, that's what I did. I kind of just tested what I wanted where I wanted the different flowers to be placed before I even did anything. I used liquid glue and applied a drop of glue on the face of the flower, so the side that you want to be visible from the front of the sign, and then I used a Q-tip to thinly distribute the glue across the flower. Then I carefully applied the flower to my desired spot and gently pressed. The whole process was a bit of tinkering and doing a lot of small things, time consuming, but fairly easy. And the results are so cute. I really, really loved my table signs. And then when finished, I put the sign to the side and let everything dry. The next DIY item were my two greenery chandeliers that I had in my reception venue and these were beautiful. For this project you will need wire wreath frames in 24 inch and 18 inch diameter. Uh, I got mine from Michael in the color dark green. You will need artificial greenery garland plus additional greenery of your choice to add some dimension. I added blueberries and thin garland for hanging up the chandelier. And then you will also need some fish line, floral wire, clippers, and scissors. First thing I did was to wrap the greenery garlands around the wire wreath. I started with a smaller wreath, the 18 inch diameter. Each garland was five feet long, and I used three garlands for the 24 inch diameter wreath and two garlands for the 18 inch diameter wreath. Uh, and I used the green floral wire to secure the garlands around the wreaths. 
I tied the garland where the horizontal wire and circular wire crossed, if that makes sense, and used that as an anchor. The first garland was anchored on the outer wire. The second garland was anchored on the second inner circle wire. And for the larger wreaths that had three wires, I would just place the third garland wherever there was a gap. A thing to consider is that many garlands have a front and a back, where the back appears to be more pale and papery, so I had to make sure that the lush green side was the side facing down, so if people looked up at the chandelier, they would see the nice side of the garland, so beware of that. You will also have to fluff and manipulate the garlands to get your desired look and make sure any gaps are covered up. After my garlands were attached to the wreath, I added some blueberries to create some interest and dimension. After I finished putting on the garlands on the small and the large wreath, it was time to assemble the whole thing. I calculated that I was going to have the wreaths hanging down 40 inches, so I cut four pieces of 55 inch long fish line to give me some margin when tying the line. Hindsight, I now realize I could have gotten away with much lower hanging chandeliers as our venue had a tall ceiling, so please consider your venue before doing this step. When you have your four fish lines, tie them to an anchor like a metal ring like I had. Uh, this metal ring can then go on a hook in the ceiling of your venue or for my case we actually had metal rods in the ceiling. Use zip ties if that is needed or if you have hooks in the ceiling you can just put that metal ring in with the hook. Now tie two of the fish lines to opposite sides of your large wreath and then you hang up the chandelier on a hook if you have one. Now it's actually easier to make sure you tie everything level when you're fastening the remaining two fish lines. When you have the main large wreath attached and leveled, you can remove the chandelier from the hook and set it down on a table or floor to attach the smaller wreath. Now you can cut four shorter fish lines I don't remember the exact length I cut, but the important thing is that they are the same length. I didn't want to have too big of a gap between the large and the small wreaths, but you can do whatever suits your style. Like in the previous step, I attached two of the fish lines going from the large wreaths to the small wreaths. Then I hung up the chandelier on a hook and tied the two remaining fish lines so that they were as leveled as possible. Now the heavy work is done. Lastly, you add the mini greenery garlands to three of the fish lines to finish off the look because otherwise you just have like an invisible chandelier look. But that could be a look if you also like that. Uh, you could also use green velvet ribbon to tie up to the metal ring to give a different look. Or why not a thick rope for a rustic look? Just use your creativity. And this is the finished look of my chandelier and I absolutely loved it. If I could do this all over again, I would try to find bigger wreaths so I could make larger chandeliers. And I would have hung them much lower so they were more visible in the venue. I still loved these DIY projects. I really hope you like these as well and you will try them. If you did like this video, don't forget to click the like button and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Bye.